guys, share this broadcast. We would really appreciate it. I know this topic is not talked about a lot. And uh, a lot of people will be really interested in hearing this. And many people need to hear this stuff. And yeah, if you guys can share it, that'd be great. Awesome. 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 Before we start, I uh-huh. just was going to ask you. So since we are, <laughs> we have been married for 13 years. How has it been for you? <laughs> Wow, I wasn't ready for this question. <laughs> so it been how's it been married to you for 13 yes, years? Yes, yes. Well, I gotta tell you that uh first few years was um uh was trial. Uh, and uh, some days was tribulation <laughs> and some days were um hardship. It it was it was hard. I didn't realize how selfish I was. Um I didn't realize how stuck up I was. And a lot of that was exposed through the marriage. And then, um, and I think later on, I started to get, started to grow. Um, and you, uh, what really was helpful for me is that in the beginning, you walked in, you loved the ministry. And because my life is committed to ministry, that made it very, a lot easier. And it was actually very mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. And so I really enjoyed that. Um, and even down the road, the last 13 years, you've been probably the greatest support. Aww. And it's been really um, the one that I lean on. And so in the last, I think, two years, the Holy Spirit started to deal with my heart and actually kind of put this on my heart that for me to last in ministry, there is two persons I have to seek to please in a healthy way. One is the Holy Spirit. He knows me. And the other one is my wife because you know me as well more than anybody else like I could maybe trick some people and but you wouldn't you know me Mm -hmm. so like if something is not right with me like you you right away can read it without spirit of discernment so I gained a lot more appreciation a lot more the friendship level the partnership level that I've had had before so uh, with you so it's been yeah um, yeah, I've been really enjoying that and I think you're more beautiful today than you were 13 years ago. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) And so, and I think you're becoming more beautiful every (laughs) single um, uh, year. And so, and I think you're more beautiful because I love you. (laughs) (laughs) Of course. (laughs) I I just ruined my little humble uh, uh, thing. (laughs) Yeah. What about you? Uh, What about about you? How's it? uh, How's it been for you to be married to uh, Mr. Wonderful? You know, I wouldn't say anointed man of God. uh, I wouldn't say like that, but since you already mentioned it, yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's say um, when we since we were dating, I fell in love with you, and I loved your spirit, and how strong it was, and I feel like you still keep that, and it remains the same, and that's what I love, love, love. Thirteen years down the road. I feel like you're still the same guy mm-hmm. in your spirit, except, of course, you have grown in the Lord so much. And personally as well, you learn to love me. <laughs> I also learned uh, a lot of things, how to be a wife, because when we just got married, it was hard for me because I battled with my personal issues. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's so important, I believe, before you get married to get your uh, personal issues, demons, character whatever you know that there is to be fixed, maybe bring it to the Lord and kind of like try to get healed in some areas. But, you know, afterwards, after a few years, the Lord has really done a great job in healing me. And he has made me a person that I love now. I like myself. And and that's what helps me to be more healthy <laughs> and a wife to you, I believe. And um yeah, and you learned to love me and the way I needed to be loved. And I learned yeah, I to know be... in the beginning I loved you yeah. the way I wanted you to love me. Yes. Yeah, and for those of it you was... who know me, most of the guys' uh, way of being loved is actually uh, like service, acts of service. So I was hoping Lana would do like, you know, clean my car. Yeah, he, I would come things, from wash, work. He yeah. cleaned my car, cleaned the house. And I didn't even notice those things because... I could care less. And I was like, let's go to the park, hold my hand, hug me. And he's like, no, I don't want to. You didn't even notice what I did for you. (laughs) It was kind of funny slash not so funny. But then we learned uh, each other's love languages and 
But it's one thing to know each other, uh, each other's love languages. It's another thing to learn to speak those languages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because if you to know it, but you don't person, do it, yeah. yeah it's, to choose to love that yeah. person. It's, yeah, but um, lastly, I just want to say that um, I love how you remain with the Lord and you're walking with the Lord and how you're growing in your humility, even though <clears throat> I do see that, you know, your influence, ministry, church, everything is growing. The Lord is taking you so high, but I see how you remain, the posture of your heart remains so humble. And that, to me, is the most attractive thing about you. You see and that personally? Absolutely. Really? It personally, yes. Anything that kind of you can point to that makes you feel that I have that? It's just the way you are, the way you talk about people, the way you are with people, the way you are with me. It's just the little things, especially when you're home, when when nobody sees you. Mm -hmm. So that. Well, guys, I'm going to have to listen to this broadcast <laughs> to uh, boost my uh, self-esteem. Praise you, Jesus. Yeah, I guess. Uh, amen. <sighs> Come on. Okay, somebody. I'm done with live streaming today, so I'll see you guys uh, in a few weeks. I need to go talk to Jesus right now and stuff. So amen. But we have uh, like 700 people watching on Facebook. We've never had that on Facebook. Come on. That's uh, that's crazy. How many of you guys from Facebook are from the Philippines? Drop number one in the chat. If this is your first time watching us live, drop number one in the chat. Um, let us know where you're watching from. Our introduction has come to an end. Now we want to kind of see where you guys are uh, watching from. Let us know which country you're watching us from. And uh, we um, want to kind of give a shout out. I saw Pastor Rickard earlier in the chat. Um, Alaska, Texas. Uh, maybe you can highlight. Um, See a lot of people dropping number one, Philippines in the house. Yeah, so the <laughs> Philippines are also on Facebook for the first and, time. And yeah. YouTube too. Mm -hmm. But anyways, yeah, there's a lot of people from all over yeah. uh, watching us. And we love you guys. We appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is going to be a blessing to you. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So as we mentioned um, earlier, we are celebrating uh, 13 years of our relationship in the beginning was kind of rough but um, as we learn to love each other as we learn to mature and as we learn to walk in humility we've seen the Lord also transform our relationship to bring Jesus glory and to help us serve Jesus in more effective way as a couple um, though people see me most of the time but at the same time I can guarantee you that I would never be able to do what I do without the support and the help of both um, my pastor, my parents, but most importantly, this girl right here who um, has stood, stands, supports my biggest cheerleader and, and I'm also her uh, cheerleader. So I'm just really glad uh, for that. But today we're going to dive into a topic that I believe is very important, sexual purity. We've addressed the issue of sex in marriage. We've addressed the issue of fighting in marriage, spiritual warfare in marriage. But we're going to tackle the issue of purity in marriage. And Lana, what is purity? So purity is defined being without a mixture. Purity is who you are before, after the temptation, not before. Purity is the path. It's not a place. It's mm -hmm. what we, it's, it's a path you walk mm -hmm. in purity all your life. It's not the point that you reach. And purity is the path upon which relationship travels, right? Purity will cost you, so don't compromise. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> because it's compromise. compromise will cost you mm -hmm. too. Yes. So purity mm -hmm. is costly. Yes. But so is mm -hmm. compromise. So yeah. for those people who think that, oh, purity is expensive, you know, it's hard to walk in purity. But it's also hard to walk without purity. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Joseph ran from lust, end up in prison. Samson ran with lust, he ended up in prison. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Joseph came out of that prison to the palace and Samson came out of that prison straight to pretty much his funeral yes. because he died right mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. And um, so purity is being without mixture. Mm -hmm. It's being not contaminated. And therefore, it has very little to do actually with being single. It has very little to do with being married. It has to do with your heart. Mm -hmm. It has to do with your posture mm -hmm. of your heart. And it has... I know that many people don't realize this can actually change the dynamic of your relationship. This can bring deeper satisfaction in the area of sexuality. Because once you bring pornography, once you bring masturbation, once you bring 
fantasies, once you bring all of this other stuff, you will never be able to enjoy the beauty and the pleasure that God wants you to have in marriage. Purity is one of the greatest biblical paths mm -hmm. to enjoy the pleasure that God wants us to have in marriage. Yes, and I think purity in itself is very satisfying. If you walk in purity, you you I always get this satisfaction, mm. like the feeling of satisfaction that I it's pleasing to the Lord. Yeah. Your heart posture is right before the Lord, and this beautiful feeling of satisfaction comes, and it's absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. One of the statements that I like to say is, "Purity is keeping your underwear on." Now it might come off as a little bit confusing, and we're not going to share in this broadcast things that are R-rated or anything of that sort. But in the scripture, in Exodus chapter 28 and verses 42 and 43, there is a verse there. And Lana, would you read it for us, please? Yes. And you shall make them linen trousers to cover their nakedness. They shall reach from the waist to their thighs. They shall be on Aaron and on his sons when they come into the tabernacle of meeting or when they come near the altar to minister in the holy place. And they do not uh, in incur, in incur uh, iniquity and die. Yeah, It shall be a statue forever to him and his descendants after him. Now, at first, when you are reading this, you know, you're like, there's a lot of very interesting things in the Old mm -hmm. Testament, and this mm -hmm. is one of them. Mm -hmm. God says to His priests that when they walk into His presence, they should have, and let me just use word the Bible uses, trousers, but it's really undergarments, mm -hmm. meaning they had these garments that they wore in God's presence, priestly garments, mm -hmm. but God was concerned that the undergarments mm -hmm. were there for this thing to cover their nakedness mm -hmm. and God says that these undergarments will also mm -hmm. cover those private areas of the body. God made it very clear. He says, when you come to my tabernacle or near the altar to minister so you don't incur iniquity right. and die. I think what happens with a lot of people is they wear the garments of praise. That's what people see. We wear the garments of ministry. That's what people see. But purity is wearing the trousers. Mm -hmm. It's wearing the things under that nobody sees. Yeah. It's your life under the life everybody sees. You know, people can see me on the stage. People can see you in your workplace, happy, bubbly, going to church and everything. It's the you nobody sees. It's the yes. undergarment. It's the, it's, I call it the trousers, the... Mm -hmm. Keeping your underwear on, meaning it's keeping your private life yes. that nobody sees, pleasing to Jesus, especially those of us who minister at the altars. Mm -hmm. We minister in the area that touches other people's lives. It's possible to be people that wear outer garments mm -hmm. of praise, ministry, gifting, and have inner garments that are polluted, compromising, um, questionable mm -hmm. um, things that are not pleasing to God. That's true and that makes it a heart issue because you know your own what's going on there inside mm -hmm. your private your heart and God knows but nobody else knows so it's a, purity is a heart issue not hands issue right? And could you read those two verses to confirm the part about purity being yes. an issue of the heart. It's a private issue. Right. So Matthew 5, 8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And Psalm 24, 4, it says, He who has clean hands and pure heart, uh, who has not lifted his soul to an idol, nor swore, sworn deceitfully. Yeah. I want you to notice that in both of the references, mm -hmm. The Bible connects purity to the heart, not yes. to the hands. Now, when you look right now on the video, you can see my hands. You cannot see my heart. Yes. So heart is something that is private. Mm -hmm. It's 
not visible to a human eye. Hands is what's visible. It's our behavior. It's our acts. It's our works, words. So heart is the private issue. That's why, and first when I read to you the verse about the undergarments, some of you are like, man, you're comparing purity to undergarments. What, what is that? Because it's a private issue. It's an invisible, it's, it's an issue that people don't see right away. Mm -hmm. Your spouse doesn't see that right away. Children doesn't, don't see that right away. Your church doesn't see that right away. But it's what you have that's under mm -hmm. what people see. And David says, if you want to ascend the hill of God, meaning if you want to dwell in God's presence, yeah. so relationship with God depends on this purity. So is every relationship. As he says this, is that your undergarments, your, your stuff here inside, needs to be mm -hmm. pure mm -hmm. and then of course the hands have to be clean mm -hmm. and then don't lift your soul to an idol just because you are a virgin that doesn't mean you are pure just because you are not dating it doesn't mean that you are pure just because you are married it does not mean yes. you are pure mm -hmm. just because you are not married it doesn't mean you are yes. pure virginity is until marriage purity is for life, is for life. Yes. Yes. And I think you can't really have your hands clean until you have your heart pure. Ooh, that's a word. <laughs> yeah. Say that I, again. Say that again. Because I, 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 I got to soak that in. If you don't have your heart purified and mm -hmm. be pure. And I think many people try to clean their hands real quick. And still the issue is in the heart mm -hmm. that is not dealt with before the Lord. What are the four types of purity? So number one is physical pu purity, uh -huh. number two, mental purity. So physical is the one that people would see. It's the cleanness of hands. Mm -hmm. It's the area where right. we don't have mm -hmm. physical relationship with somebody who is not our spouse. And right. We physically don't get mm -hmm. involved in mm -hmm. those things that the Bible calls clearly sinful. Right. And next one is mental, mental purity. Jesus says, you know, not to lust in your mm -hmm. in your heart, in your mind, in mm -hmm. your in your thoughts, mm -hmm. fantasies, and yes. the immoral thoughts that dominate our our mind. A lot of times they do because we we watch stuff that is just mm -hmm. not right or not good. Uh huh. Yeah. And the third one, emotional purity. And this one I think relates more already when the person is begin becoming uh, attached mm -hmm. and becomes feelings in, involved, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. fascinated and connected to somebody mm -hmm. who is not of the Lord, even if there's nothing sexual, yes. perverted, but it's already does, that attachment is with the person. It's like eating of that forbidden fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the last one is spiritual purity. And I think that one is, of course, very important. You can hit all those three and have them right you can be physically, mentally, and emotionally pure, but if you're not spiritually pure, th those things, they, I don't want to say they don't matter, but to be spiritually pure is number one thing, is mm -hmm. walking with the Lord, believing in Jesus Christ, because there's a lot of people who are morally good, but they belong to some kind of a false religion, mm -hmm. and that is spiritually well, unpure. Morally good, of course, in their mm -hmm. own eyes in as well. In their own yeah. eyes, yes. And maybe in the eyes of the mm -hmm. community, but at the same mm -hmm. time, like you said, mm -hmm. they are not worshiping Jesus. They're yes. not worshiping in truth and spirit. Yes. They're worshiping some other stuff. Spiritual purity must mm -hmm. be there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So physical purity, mental purity, emotional purity, and spiritual purity. Ephesians 5 3 it says but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not even be named among you as fitting for the saints so all mm -hmm. uncleanness mm -hmm. so purity is not just hey I'm not um, having um, physical intimacy outside of marriage mm -hmm. but do you have that in your mind is there an emotional I guess for some girls, mm -hmm. there could be just an emotional attachment mm -hmm. to somebody that they're not having a physical relationship mm -hmm. with. They're not even having fantasies in yeah. sexual fantasies, but that attachment itself mm -hmm. um, is causing that contamination. And yes. Paul says, make sure that not only fornication, that's the physical component, yes. but he says all uncleanness, meaning there's different dimensions of purity. And physical, this, mental, and, and emotional, spiritual. this is spiritual. where the soul ties come in place many times. Yeah. On emotional, on purity level. Yeah. Now, we esteem purity too little and desire it too late. Drop this in the chat. We esteem purity too little mm -hmm. and most of us desire it 
too late. Most of us desire purity too late. We don't prepare and plan for it. And today we're going to give you just a few biblical principles. And then we're going to share some of our practical approach to how we prioritize and walk in purity in our own life. But first, let's dive into 2 Timothy chapter 2, mm -hmm. verse 22. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, with those who call on the Lord out of pure heart. If we can look at this verse, we see three main <coughs> principles. We run from something, we run to something, we run with someone. Let's drop this in the chat. We run from something, we run to something, and we run with some people. So we flee, we pursue, and we run with somebody. With somebody, mm -hmm. meaning you don't do it alone. Yeah. It's not done in a vacuum. You need mm -hmm. a community. Now, the first thing that we want to highlight is this. Purity is not a point you cross. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing pursuit. Now, when I was younger, and I remember when I was actually addicted to pornography, my idea of purity was always at the point mm -hmm. of no longer watching pornography. Right. So I thought, yeah. When I get to the point mm -hmm. that I'm no longer watching porn, I am pure. Mm -hmm. You know, and I got to the point that the Lord delivered me. But not watching pornography doesn't automatically translate mm -hmm. you are pure. Because Paul in here doesn't just say don't watch porn. He says pursue. Purity is pursued. Come on, yeah. It's not just you, you arrived. Meaning you'll never arrive at purity. Oh. <laughs> Drop this in the chat. You never arrive at purity. Why? Because purity is the path. Yeah. It's not a point. It's not a destination. It's the pursuit. It's the constant going after as long as you are alive. So purity is not being parked in the garage. Yes. yes. Oh, I'm no longer doing this. I'm no longer doing this. I'm no longer doing this. No, no, no. That's not purity. Purity is not being parked. Purity is driving all the time. Mm -hmm. It's being in a pursuit, ongoing mm -hmm. pursuit. And I remember when I was delivered from pornography and, and then this revelation hit me and I was like, oh shoot, that doesn't mean I'm pure just because I'm not looking at pornography because I could be right. now prideful. I could right. be now a person that is fantasizing about yes. other women. I could be undressing them with my mind. Mm -hmm. I could be holding feelings of resentment against somebody. I could have different yes. types of uncleanness, yes. Yes. but I took so much pride mm -hmm. that I wasn't doing this sin that I really wanted to mm -hmm. overcome in mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. And while it's great that wow. God delivered me from that, but purity is more than not watching pornography. Drop this in the chat. Purity is more than not watching Come pornography. On. Purity is the pursuit. Mm -hmm. Pursuit. After what? Not purity. Yes, righteousness. But righteousness. And, and what, Holy Spirit. Amen. And what's interesting, I found that pursuit of righteousness, but where do we get our righteousness? It's from Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We put on His righteousness, right? He becomes our righteousness. Therefore, we pursue Jesus Christ. Because sometimes you can see, okay, I pursue righteousness, but in reality, we pursue Jesus Christ. That's how we pursue righteousness. Faith, love, peace, and with those who call on the Lord. We need purity to be in God's presence. Yes. And we need God's presence to be pure. Oh, come on. Mm. <laughs> That's good. Let's drop this in the chat. We need purity to be in God's presence. And we need God's presence to be pure. Yeah. Selah. You can take a moment. <laughs> Let it sunk Just in. Just think about yeah. it. That means that pursuing Jesus is how I arrive at purity, yeah. which means the pursuit of Jesus never ends, no. which means I never mm -hmm. arrive at purity. I'm constantly pursuing. I am better right. today than I was yesterday, mm -hmm. but pursuing Jesus, I always, you know, compare it to running. Like when you run, you get a healthier heart. Right. When you, If you run after Jesus, you get pure heart. So mm -hmm. if you want to have purity, this is more than just installing a software on your computer, on your phone. Mm -hmm. This is more than, hey, I want to set up many boundaries. 
the first and foremost thing you must understand yes. is purity is not a point you arrive at mm -hmm. it's a pursuit after his presence you need the purity to be pure yeah. to, to pursue him to pursue and him. you need to pursue him to be pure yeah 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 we need God's presence to be pure Come because on, it's the number one thing that purifies us, I believe. And I remember every time I experienced, when I was going through my hard time in life, every time I've experienced the presence of the Holy Spirit, I felt like the waves of purity mm -hmm. came over me. I felt whole. I felt pure. And that's what the presence of the Lord does. There's like this innocence that, that yeah. hits yeah. us. There's a sense of like cleanness that comes with the presence of God. So that's the first biblical principle and that is to pursue, to run after. Mm -hmm. So let's review. Mm -hmm. the, the purity is to run after something, to run from something, mm -hmm. and to run with someone. Mm -hmm. uh, drop this in the chat. Purity is to run after something we mentioned to purity is not a point it's a pursuit purity is running from something and then purity is to run with someone, someone. now let's touch the second component of biblical principle of purity and that is to run from something paul mm -hmm. says to mm -hmm. flee youthful lusts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to pursue purity we have to flee those things that many people are flirting with <laughs> A.K lust yeah it's not something lust is not something we're called to fight yeah it's something we're called to flee to pursue purity we have to call sexual sin for what it is it's wickedness it's not weakness god calls sexual sin a disobedience mm -hmm. not a defeat Come on. yeah any thoughts you have on that no, it's just uh, very common, especially in our culture. People see this as a as a as a defeat, not disobedience mm -hmm. to God, not as wickedness, but mm -hmm. as weakness that they're fighting, uh -huh. battling with. Fleeing. What 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 were what are some of those things that people need to flee? Like Joseph, he fled from the woman that was trying to seduce him. Mm -hmm. Like for somebody who is wanting to pursue Jesus, um, it will cause them to run from some things. Right. It will cause them to delete some things. Yeah. It will cause them to not respond to some people. Yeah. Or it, walk away sometimes mm -hmm. from the places of temptation. The places that could cause temptation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think we could be, Jesus even said, if you're being tempted, he said, cut some things off. Right. If your hand causes you to sin, remove Caught that. Up, yeah. If this thing causes you to sin, remove that. So if there are things that you feel like are feeding mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. lusts, then you simply mm -hmm. put a cold turkey and just kill it. But I think to do that, you have to be really honest with yourself and not to play with it. Oh, I can do it, you know, just I, I can try one more time. I will overcome it. But if you be honest with yourself and follow the word of God and trust, that's why I think says. without purity, without pursuing yes. Jesus, yes. you will yes. always look for loopholes. Yeah. Loopholes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. if, if you're not pursuing Jesus, mm -hmm. like I could give you the boundaries. Yeah. Oh, yeah. don't do this. But yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're you're not gonna be motivated. That's why. Or honest with themselves. Yeah, and we can debate like, oh, is this okay? Is this not okay? Yeah. But in reality, I really, if you just get closer to Jesus, there's so much stuff that's no longer. Mm -hmm allowed not necessarily this illegalism like look at yeah, jesus coming yeah. to the girl that was dead mm -hmm. and he only allowed like three disciples i always mm -hmm. said that the, the closer you get to your miracle the less people are allowed in your small <laughs> circle because jesus and it's not about legalism it's just jesus becomes so much more yeah that you don't need those things and yeah. you no longer yeah. feel comfortable with those things you're yeah. like no yeah. I, I i shouldn't be watching this yeah. no i shouldn't be doing this yeah. why am i uh messaging yeah. this person mm -hmm. i this is not normal this is not yeah. good you start feeling there's sensitivity yeah. increases in yeah. your life yeah. and so that's why the key first is to pursue Jesus. Right. That's the real pur purity. Yes. And that decides what you're going to run from. Yes. What you're going to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. What you're going to give up. What you're going to disconnect from. What you're going to give up and, and, and get away and from. I, I just feel like many times when people having a hard time pursuing Jesus is because they are, and they are falling into these sins even though they don't want to do it is because they are not satisfied. In but Jesus. once you pursue Jesus... 
for reals and you walk after him, he satisfies you that you don't need those extra things. You don't feel like you're losing something if you're not doing something. You don't feel like the boundaries of the word of God is your prison. You Mm -hmm. feel like they are your safe haven, actually, Mm -hmm. because you are satisfied emotionally, spiritually, in every way in the Lord. That's right. That's right. So, yeah. And mm-hmm. the third biblical principle that we're going to hit on purity right now, and then we're going to share some of the practical things mm-hmm. that we do, and I believe they're going to be very helpful. So as we are welcoming new people that are tuning in, go ahead and hit like on YouTube if you are watching, re-watching right now, and mm-hmm. on Facebook, go ahead and share this right now. Just, mm-hmm. just click that share button uh, right now. And those of you on Instagram and TikTok, hop on over to YouTube and Facebook. We'd love to see you here. So we welcome everybody that's just tuning in. Mm -hmm. We are talking about purity, uh, what purity is, types of purity, as well as three biblical principles for walking in purity. And then we're going to share some of the practical things of how we see that happening in our own life. We're celebrating 13 years of anniversary this coming week. And so we Mm -hmm. just wanted to hop in and share those things with you. We mentioned that purity is not a point that you cross. It's a Mm -hmm. pursuit ongoing pursuit. Number two is that in order to be pure, we have to flee those things that other people are flirting with. And the reason why many people are flirting with sin instead of fleeing it is because many times they're not really pursuing Jesus genuinely. And I think like if we be very honest, there is not enough of God's fear in their heart. Right. Fear of the Lord. Because Joseph feared God Mm -hmm. and therefore he fled. Yes. And he called sin for what it is. It was wickedness. Yeah. Yeah. And people today don't fear God. There's such an emphasis on the relationship with God mm-hmm. and such a little emphasis today on the reverence for God. Yeah. And the Bible says through the fear of God, man flees sin. Wow. So if you only know about, you know, daddy God and you go with him, you know, to uh, just kind of like always daddy God, daddy God, daddy God, but you, you, you don't mm-hmm. know Jesus also as the king, as the Lord, as the king that you submit your life for. If it's just more of like a teddy bear God, um, but there is no sense of awe and reverence for God, yeah. Yeah. it's going to quickly manifest itself in the fact that mm-hmm. sin yes. is something you're going to constantly justify and have flirt with yes. instead of kind of walk away as far as possible from it. Not because of illegalism, but because you're pursuing Jesus. And you can't be running after Jesus without running from something. A crazy one person one time told me, yes, Jesus is always with me and I'm always with him. He's in my pocket. We go eat together. Ooh. I was like, what? <laughs> what eat. are you saying? In your and, pocket. And, and look, look. That person was very serious. Mm -hmm. That's the mentality of it's like no reverence before the Lord. How can you even say those things? Jesus in your pocket. He's not in your pocket. No, he's not. (laughs) Yeah. Now, the last principle of purity is that purity must be pursued in a community. Paul made it very Mm -hmm. clear. He said, pursue with. Who did he say to pursue purity with? With those who call on the Lord out of pure heart. Wow. Come on. So that means you can't really walk in purity without Mm -hmm. pursuing, without running from something, and without Mm -hmm. being with people who are calling on God, meaning they have a life of prayer. With pure heart. And they have a pure heart. That's something too. If the person you're running with is Kim Kardashian, (laughs) you're not going to achieve purity. If the person you're walking with is um, your role model is Beyonce, and if your role model is a pop singers who are full of lust and pride and arrogance, if who you're running with, who you're constantly being fed with, if yep. what you're consuming, yep. because that's what it means running Absolutely. with, if your circle of friends is your divorced girlfriends mm-hmm. who are mm-hmm. sleeping with anything that moves, you're not going to walk in purity. And no matter how much you hide and say that, oh, but I'm influencing them. But in reality, who's really influencing who? You can't walk in purity without choosing Mm -hmm. your tribe, without having right community. But many times it's uncomfortable to, you know, pursue those kind of relationships. And this is where the price comes in as well. It depends. Do you want to be pure in your heart, with clean hands? And in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says... Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good morals. So if you are comfortable with your friends who have bad character, it it will corrupt you. So challenge yourself 
Sometimes it's not easy emotionally to step up and go and find yourself, surround yourself with people who will challenge you to purity, who will set an example for you. You have to pull yourself up a little bit and it's going to be uncomfortable, but that's what it takes to walk in purity and to have a pure heart. Your crowd creates your cloud. If you feel like a cloud of lust is over you, I would ask you a question. Which crowd are you running with? Who is on your playlist? Who is the TV? Which TV show are you watching? What kind of music are you listening? Who are your five closest friends? Because your crowd mm -hmm. creates your cloud. Drop this in the chat. Your tribe creates your vibe. Mm -hmm. Meaning <laughs> the kind of vibe that your life has is directly connected to the kind of tribe you have inserted yourself into and have around your life. You must understand is you can't evangelize to those you are tempted by. So yep. if your homies and cronies and your people you are tempted by every time you come into that circle you're tempted to fornicate, you're tempted to drink, you're tempted to get high, you're tempted to curse. You can't use this excuse, I'm there to be the light mm -hmm. because that is the place of temptation. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody else needs to go to that place to evangelize. For right now, you need to run from that place because yeah. for you, mm -hmm. that's a place where the enemy is trying to evangelize mm -hmm. you, to bring you back. Like Samson should have not been going to the Philistines land mm -hmm. probably and yeah. ch chilling over there because that was his, that was his temptation. Yeah. He went there fishing for a girlfriend. Yeah. You know, and because we have to be very careful that we don't try to evangelize in yeah. the places we yeah. are tempted in. You know, small personal example really quick. I remember when we just moved to the United States, it was a very, very long time ago. Mm -hmm. okay? And I got saved right, right when we came to the United States. And I, two years right after, I decided to go back to Russia. Uh -huh. Mind you, I had all of my unchristian heathen friends, mm -hmm. which they are good people, but they are, you know, they are corrupt in their way <laughs> and they're not godly people. And that's what, what, what I was surrounded by and uh, hang out with all the uh -huh. time. Those were my friends. And two years after I got saved, I decided to go back to visit them all. I miss them all. And my older brother is telling me something. He's like, Lana, don't go yet. And I was like, I got so mad. I'm like, why are you telling me this? I'm, I, I can't go. No, because you're going to go back to your lifestyle. Wow. You're not strong yet. And guess what? He saw that in me. And I was too blind, too proud to admit that. But deep on the inside, I felt like he was right. Guess what? I still went. And guess what happened? I felt back right into sin, into what I was doing. And I felt, when I came back, I felt so miserable guilt and shame overtook me. I had to battle with that for quite a few months until I came back to the Lord, until I climbed out of that pit. And that's what happened, you know, when I wasn't strong enough and I went back to those same friends who took me down. And I saw somebody commenting this on Facebook and it's worthy repeating it. Loneliness is not an excuse to be friends with unhealthy people. No, it's not. Sometimes we get lonely as Christians because yeah. we, like you mentioned, yeah. it's new. Christian faith yeah. is new. Mm -hmm. Radical commitment is new. Yeah. And a lot of your friends are still inviting you to maybe smoke weed. They're inviting you maybe just a little bit after work. Let's get a little bit drunk. Um, let, let's hang out. It's not going to be a big deal. It's just going to be a bar. We just then go to some, something else. And next thing you know, is that you go back there out of loneliness. Yeah. You're like, man, I just need a company. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. none of the Christian people respond to me. And so, and then you're going back and you mm -hmm. find yourself not living in purity. Yeah. Yeah. To walk in purity, we got to pursue Jesus. We got to run from stuff because as you're pursuing Jesus, you're automatically running from things. And then you, you got to do it in the community. You can't do it by yourself. Your tribe affects your vibe. Yeah. Your crowd creates your cloud. You can't evangelize to those yeah. you're tempted by. And loneliness is not an excuse yeah. to stay in a toxic, spiritually tempting environment. Um, bad company will corrupt good morals. Yeah. Your friends, your close circle will either bring you closer to Jesus mm -hmm. or they will cripple your ability to walk yeah. after Jesus. 
-hmm. Now, what we wanted to do <coughs> is share five, mm -hmm. some of the practical tips concerning walking in purity from our own life. So, but before we do that, let's review again. Purity is to mm -hmm. be without mixture. Mm -hmm. We mentioned that purity is a hard issue. It's the life we have under the life that everybody else sees. It, it's important to God. It's important to our relationships. Purity, it's emotional, it's physical, it's mental, and it's also spiritual. We mentioned three principles, biblical principles of purity, and that is to run with, run from, mm -hmm. and run pursue. to, mm -hmm. to pursue. Purity is pursuit. It's not some kind of a magic point that you arrive, you finally married, oh, now I'm pure. Mm -hmm. No, 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 you can be pure now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, or like, oh, I finally overcome this, now I'm pure. That's good. But purity is more than that. It's a pursuit. Mm -hmm. And now let's share practically some of the things that, you know, we've seen in our own life mm -hmm. that work for that. But before we do that, if this is helping somebody, could you drop number one in the chat and hit like to this video on YouTube and go ahead and share this on Facebook to other people or tag somebody who might be on Facebook right now. But let's go ahead and share five of those principles of purity mm -hmm. from our marriage. Mm -hmm. What is the first one? I think the first, the bottom line of everything is to keep your heart healthy and full of fear of God. That's like the bottom line of even start mm -hmm. of purity. What does that mean for you? What does that mean, keep your heart? I mean, the Bible says in Proverbs right. 4, 23, that uh, keep your heart, you know, with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. But what does that look like? It looks like you have to, like we said, keeping your heart pure as you're pursuing Jesus, you're obeying the Word of God, and you're believing that this is good for you. And that's how we keep our heart healthy. And I think it's practically is having a devotional mm -hmm. time with Jesus regularly. Um, because Jesus is the doctor and he constantly examines yes. our heart. Mm -hmm. um, so spending time with Jesus regularly and also keeping a temperature that mm -hmm. you have a reverence for God, mm -hmm. that there is a fear of God. Because if your heart doesn't have the fear of the Lord, mm -hmm. okay, it doesn't matter how many uh, apps you install to keep yourself from purity. Like your heart is deceitful above all things. It's going to trick you. It's going to trick people around you. But if the fear of God is the center of your heart and you spend quality time with Jesus regularly, whether in prayer, in the Word, memorizing yes. the Scriptures, and you kind of yes. make it a habitual thing to keep your heart healthy. And it's not only keeping your heart healthy from lust. It's also keeping your heart healthy from hate. Yeah. Bitterness. Offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So keeping your heart healthy is the number one thing because everything else really flows from it. Yeah. Everything flows from your heart. Yeah. They don't flow from your boundaries. Please understand, mm -hmm. having cool boundaries is not going to guarantee yes. walk of purity. Your heart is what matters. Yeah. And so regularly spending time with Jesus and, and allowing Jesus to convict us, allowing the Holy Spirit to convict us. And like us. we mentioned, it's in the presence of God, in the presence of the Holy Spirit is when he washes our, us pure and we become pure mm -hmm. in His presence. But if we don't spend that time with the Lord, how is He going to have that opportunity to wash us with His presence and make us pure? Yeah, His yep. presence is what helps us to stay healthy. Yeah. And then, you know, we begin to feel like, man, this is, I, uh, I, I'm drifting. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not doing good. Mm -hmm. I need to come back. And the beautiful part about the presence of Jesus is there's always hope in it. Yeah, It's not like, oh, I'm so horrible. But there's yeah. a cleansing. You know, Isaiah felt like, oh, I'm so dirty, yeah. God. Yeah. But yeah. then there was the cleansing that took place right away. And way. even in that time, you begin to self-evaluate. You have that time to mm -hmm. think, to self-evaluate where you are at. But if you're always on the go, 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 yeah. go, go, and you don't have that time, you will miss that that very important part where the Holy Spirit, you, you will miss His voice where He's telling you, okay, yeah, this area, you know, needs to be tuned in. <laughs> yeah, constant yeah. tuning, constant mm -hmm. um, tweaking of our heart, constant examining. And sometimes it's to sit in the presence of yes. the Lord in stillness. Yeah. And then the, <laughs> the garbage in your heart just surfaces. <laughs> <laughs> like you're thinking something really bad about somebody or like you're offended. 
or like if you didn't get your way mm -hmm. and like you just sit for five minutes in the presence of Jesus and whatever is not healthy like, oh Jesus no and some of us don't like silence yeah. and solitude yeah, because yeah. we just don't it like what comes up us. Yes. yeah but you gotta <laughs> deal with that Absolutely. all the time yeah why because if you keep it like you gotta keep that garbage can empty, <laughs> like whatever services yeah. you, you gotta deal with that right you gotta away. Take the yeah. trash out. Yeah, regularly. you gotta keep the heart soft. <laughs> keep the heart soft. You know, it's man. If I could, if there's one secret I would say to um, stay long term with God in the ministry and in marriage, and that is purity. And if I would say one key thing for purity is to linger in God's presence until the unhealthy yeah. things in the heart surface yeah. and you deal with it through repentance come on and deal with that regularly yeah. maybe it's not every day at least every few days to keep that because we drift we we yeah. accumulate that yeah. you know disciples walked with Jesus their feet got dirty and Jesus washed the feet of the man who walked after him we all walk with Jesus, walk after Jesus. But even in this world, our feet get contaminated. Our heart gets mm -hmm. picks up things there and there. Somebody did something. We said something. And, and if you don't have that time where the feet gets washed by the word, mm -hmm. by the presence of Jesus, mm -hmm. where it's almost like that resetting happens again mm -hmm. and again, you will start. You find yourself in self-deception. You mm -hmm. find yourself be so desensitized, looking yeah. at those images, yeah. looking, yeah. talking, having those conversations, doing those things, and like not feeling anything kind of any bad, yeah. no conviction. Yeah. Yeah. And you think it's okay, but in reality, your heart yeah. is so sick it doesn't feel anything. Yeah. 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 We need that time with numb. the Lord all the time, so that that sickness, those unhealthy things, surface, and then we come back and we say, Lord, I'm sorry. And then even our spouses begin to feel, Oh, wow. You could see this person there's an there's a thing about him there's a vibe about them mm -hmm. there's a cloud around them <laughs> you know moses came from the presence of jesus and his face is shining yeah. jacob talked to god his limping meaning something has changed yeah. something is different about him and i think that that's we need that yeah. to keep our heart healthy and that's number one i know this made you some of you think like well that's what you expect from a preacher but guys that's what you expect from king solomon the wisest guy he yeah. said that yeah. to us to do. The second thing is drinking water from your own well. Yeah. <laughs> so Proverbs 5, 15 to 22, it talks about actually enjoying sexual intimacy in marriage mm -hmm. instead of going around and spreading your water everywhere mm -hmm. and or going around trying to drink water from somebody else's mm -hmm. contaminated well. I think that keeping your marriage um romantic uh full of pursuit full of like dating mm -hmm. as well just being intentional yeah. i think a lot of times we get a little bit lazy we fall into a routine we um we just kind of go through the stuff bills need to be paid you know our kids need to go to daycare kids need to go to school and like there's a lot of stuff that's just we just have a lot of stuff that we right. need to kind of stop and pause whether it's weekly maybe for 15 minutes daily some kind of a thing weekly and something every six months where we kind of pull back and mm -hmm. we rekindle the flame within our marriage and we so that we drink water from our own well that we yeah. enjoy the yeah. physical yeah. emotional yeah. intimacy in the marriage and for those of you who are single um get married <laughs> and the funny thing about the well is that when you draw water it never runs out mm. the, in the well most of the time the water is always there Come on, but somebody. when you stop drawing uh, the water from the well uh the water is gonna stay in one level and then right? it gets contaminated and yeah. that gets like it's yeah, stagnant stale. and stuff so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so that's that's important to you know to keep a flame and keep that relationship keep that dating life in your marriage going drinking mm -hmm. from your own marriage and for those maybe who are listening and you're like man I, I can't see how can it be fun to be with the same person you know you have to understand that the lust is not satisfied by mm -hmm, sex mm -hmm, mm -hmm. lust is insatiable desire it never gets satisfied yeah if sex would have satisfied lust then um we wouldn't see people cheating Mm -hmm. We wouldn't see people getting divorced for those reasons. And it, it's constantly, it yeah. needs, lust is, 
is something needs to be crucified, yeah. not satisfied. So yeah. if you have a lust problem, then this issue of being married to one person will probably like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so boring. I'll, I'll never, you know, um, enjoy, continuously to enjoy this. The real man is not the one that makes love to a thousand women. It's the one that makes love a thousand times to one wife. And, and something happens, you enjoy yeah. that relationship yeah. why because there's a purity yeah. and when you have yeah. purity you don't have some yeah. weird fantasies yeah. that you picked yeah. up from only fans yeah. or porn magazine that you're trying to satisfy because you're enjoying the person there's a connection there's a deep yeah. trust yeah. you're building life with this person and there is this exposure that you give to this person and they give to you there is no secrets yeah. the bible yeah. says they were naked and not ashamed there is that type of intimacy because mm -hmm. you can have sex and not have intimacy yeah. but when you are a christian and you have that person that you're married with something happens is you have that intimacy that physical intimacy yeah. but most importantly emotional intimacy that is huge and that's what it means to drink well from drink water from, from your own, own well, well yeah. instead of going somewhere else and drinking it from a sewer yeah it's true and like i said purity is very satisfying and when you have a, that connection with your spouse and you live pure together, you enjoy yourselves together for many years, it doesn't get dull. It actually gets deeper, more emotional. The connection is so much deeper than what the culture is trying to tell us on the opposite. Very, very important to walk in purity. Number three. Put boundaries in your relationships. So boundaries is common sense things. Um, mm -hmm. I think that the what common else? sense uh, things is, I think when people are going for alone time, for lunch, coffees, uh, driving alone with the opposite sex, I think it's breaking those boundaries. Though there's we're not talking a, about marriage, right marriage now. right now, yeah. But honestly, I think even if you are single and you are not pursuing that person and you're constantly spending time mm -hmm. with the opposite sex. Um, mm -hmm. you're kind of mm -hmm. training yourself how to be when you get married. That's so true. Because what happens is I've known few guys mm -hmm. who are in, who get engaged and the lady would go with company people for dinners, for coffees all the time, mm -hmm. constantly DMing, constantly messaging. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a habit you develop. It's not like, it's oh, I habit. need to. Yeah, because yeah. you can bring a few other co-workers and go with co-workers, but when you do it one-on-one -on -one all the mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and you know, like and the person that would be engaged to them would be like, uh, yeah, I don't think I like that. No, mm -hmm. we can be friends. It's you know, just it's a fine. <laughs> yeah, it's just a co-worker. Yeah, but I mean, you're going to lunch yeah. like three times a week and twice for coffee yeah, and then you're messaging every yeah. day. That's not a, somebody in here has feelings for somebody, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. And so I think it's common sense, but it's crazy how many people no longer have common sense. Mm -hmm. Se common sense is no longer common. Yeah. And so I think that for us as, as married people, but it starts when you are single. Right. Some people just honestly give this vibe and they have created that vibe with time where they are, where they are playboy. Mm -hmm. guys mm -hmm. like I've had some friends when I was younger and they are um, they were in our church and every place I would go in literally girls are like bees they just come to them and the guys would be like so um, like with the ladies all the time one-on-one -on -one, just hang out mm -hmm. and everything and like with me I was like mm -hmm. very awkward <laughs> yeah. but they were so comfortable and yeah. man I was yeah. like man why why am I so awkward and everything but looking back at it I'm so glad that I was not super comfortable and I understand this may offend somebody but I would rather not be in that kind of environment mm -hmm. and to set up some boundaries and respect the ladies mm -hmm. um, but at the same time honor the Lord yeah. and then when I get married and, and also protect your reputation when you that's see right that's right mm -hmm. and today like I don't have that like when people even come in contact with me, mm -hmm. the way they experience me by yes. talking with me, they don't get that vibe. Yeah. Like, oh, he's flirtatious, flirtatious, or mm -hmm. he's a playboy, huggy, touchy, kind of like yeah, all, yeah, you know, yeah, throwing yeah. these words, yeah. complimenting the girls on their appearance. So, yeah. Like, I don't have that as part of my character. I don't have yes. that as part of my vibe. Yeah. You know, there's a sense of holiness and righteousness and not self-righteousness yes. but I've carried that as a young man before I was married it didn't start with me being all playful flirtatious and then finally I got married and 
let's mm-hmm. keep just to the wife because if you keep that with everybody it will stay with you in marriage yeah. so putting these boundaries right now when you are a single guy how would you act with the girls of opposite sex if you would be married that's how you should set up your boundaries now yeah and if you are yeah. married your co-workers who you hang out with how you travel like with me i try my best not to travel alone yeah. but always i either travel with my wife or travel with one of the guys mm-hmm. or sometimes pack of guys <laughs> a lot of a lot of dudes where we would just travel together and constantly together yeah. to really protect both from the temptation mm-hmm. and accusation yes because yeah. i can be protected from the temptation mm-hmm. but today i live in a day and age yeah. Yeah. where you can have an accusation mm-hmm. you can be protected you have boundaries for your life yeah but you're also not conscious mm-hmm. of your reputation yeah. And by putting yourself in places, talking to people, uh, being alone, da 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 da, you know, sometimes people are like, hey, I just, you know, kind of want to talk to you alone. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'll step away, maybe two, three steps away. But this whole idea, let's go to a different room, close the room. Can you counsel me? (laughs) One on one, hey, pastor, I need to talk to you. You can't tell this to anybody. This is just me and you. Or we've had, uh, I've had uh, a few years ago, a person that was like stalking uh, me on every platform yes. and would send very inappropriate messages. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, and they didn't realize that there is a group of people that check my messages. I don't, the one, I'm not the one that yeah. check checks my messages. Um, I do check some of my messages, but most of it is shared by the team. And so, and of course the team would block uh, right away. And so, and this person would constantly persevere and, mm-hmm. you know, that happened a few times and that's, that's really people who want to also see you respond one time, yep. and open the it. message one mm-hmm. time. All it takes is yeah. them taking a screenshot yeah. Yeah. and there goes internet sensation mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you pretty much, there's nothing you can do about it because the, verifi- the, the proof is yes. right there yeah. and stuff. And so, so we have to be very careful to set up these boundaries, both for protecting us from temptation mm-hmm. and from accusation. Yeah, that's very good. So control what number you four. number four control what you consume. The Bible says that he who sows to the flesh reaps corruption. Yep. So, um, what does it mean to control what we consume? I think it means uh, to watch what we listen, watch what we watch watch what we uh the compliments we receive that's mm-hmm. very important too especially from the opposite sex and just watch over ourselves our, over our steps and what we do i think uh, for men you know uh you have to who, who do you follow on instagram mm-hmm. like if the people that you follow yeah. are uh, stars or um um only fan stars or these hollywood stars mm-hmm. or movie actors or people who literally lack the decency and the uh, modesty in their dress code mm-hmm. because they're there they, they know that sex sells and, if they dress up nicely honestly, many times what i've noticed even some christian people i am surprised how many women they put in the bio how they are christian they love jesus and their photos are all like bikinis everywhere <laughs> you know that's that's really questionable and of course their idea yeah. is hey i want to i want to i'm a i want to catch a good guy or yeah whatever. yeah yeah and then or like hey i'm just you know yeah. i'm promoting fitness and stuff mm-hmm. and so but uh, sometimes that fitness is uh, is pretty much soft pornography um and then you're like oh yeah i wonder why all the creeps are attracted to me well the kind of bait you are putting out yeah. will attract sharks not gonna attract the little dolphins that you're dreaming about. But again, about. it is an expression of what's in the heart. Yeah, that goes out yeah. There. many people dress yeah. up to express yeah. and to impress instead of, um, you know, to, to hide. Clothes were given so we can cover, yeah. not reveal. But today, unfortunately, yeah. people yeah. use clothes to reveal stuff. And so what we consume um, will decide our appetite. And so it relates to our videos, it relates to our photos, it relates to our music, it relates to the TV shows, it relates to the kind of things that we allow to be consumed regularly. Sooner or later, Mm -hmm. what you consume will either corrupt you slowly or it's going to build you um, slowly. And so this also relates to books. This Mm -hmm. mainly probably will relate to ladies. Mm -hmm. If you read romance novels, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, it will mess you up. Yeah, and they are yeah. as dirty as the pornography. 
it's uh, many times. yeah it's uh, written porn and yeah. stuff so and uh, a lot of you know sometimes you would see you know ladies that will read you know 50 shades of stupid i mean 50 <laughs> shades of uh, gray and stuff and they would be like you know but i'm not watching porn well you reading porn and stuff so and it, it's as mm -hmm. damaging to your emotions as yeah. somebody watching porn so mm -hmm. i would really um be, be just conscious of what you are consuming because what you're consuming is going to create your appetite yes. and then the last thing is that you have to run yes. from evil people mm -hmm. there are people who are bent sent from up. hell yep. to trip you up and not a lot of them but they are there they're pretty much I call them the delilahs they are sponsored by hell itself and their ultimate goal is they have almost like no souls it feels like and they're there to just really trip you up they're, they don't love you and even yeah. if they do that that love is just lust and yeah. they're just there to it's not real to to just just take you in and just to destroy your life that's what the enemy is just wants to use is to destroy and he will use those yeah. people and uh proverbs says a lot of yeah. verses about yeah. you know young foolish men mm -hmm. falling for that kind of stuff and so how would you recognize those people how would you recognize those people is that they are um drawn for some weird reason to you and they completely don't care about the fact like in my case mm -hmm. it would be they don't value my marriage right if they don't value my marriage they don't value me mm -hmm. if they don't value if they don't want to protect my marriage and they'll say hey you know what we want to i would want to do this and i would want to do this mm -hmm. that means that the person has no regard mm -hmm. for my purity my marriage my relationship with god my happiness with you yes. but only themselves that means that mm -hmm. ultimately the enemy is behind that yeah. and yeah. is there to destroy yeah. embarrass mm -hmm. bring a scandal destroy many christians mm -hmm. who will be affected by that who yes. will be heartbroken uh, from that mm -hmm. and so um, people who don't honor your boundaries yeah yeah that's, so that's why like if you're dating and your boyfriend or your girlfriend doesn't honor your boundaries mm -hmm. um you pretty much already know what you should do yeah. yeah some of those people if you are uh, not married mm -hmm. or even married they could be like a stalkers psychopaths um they could really be not all there or like demonically just really yeah. evil because they're foolish yeah. people like mm -hmm. you correct a foolish person they repent move mm -hmm. on evil people they don't get like you correct yeah. them doesn't work yeah. Yeah. and so you just have to like almost get a restraining order block mm -hmm. him and get away from mm -hmm. them as mm -hmm. uh, as far as possible because evil people only god can like zap them with power probably but you can't just sometimes they're just like you speak and they're like doesn't yeah. doesn't work and so evil people are very different than just foolish people yes and when we see in the book of proverbs like solomon tells us what to do with evil people just like run from them like get away from that kind of stuff because evil people are very different than foolish foolish they, they need to be stopped they, they will not stop by themselves yeah you have to do something very radical with those yeah. people yeah and so like and that's where kind of like you know you don't try to talk you yeah. know uh, uh, to them common and try sense. to like eh, you know because they don't have common sense you know and so and if you're gonna talk to delilah and try to do like some marriage counseling or like hey we want to get married mm -hmm. no delilah is <laughs> yeah it's she she and delilah could not just be a, a woman it could be a man yeah they're just sponsored by the philistines yeah. demonized on the hook of the devil and they have mm -hmm. one target you to cut your hair your eyes and to stop you because you're a threat yeah. and if you if you don't walk with that understanding that it's a war and the enemy is using you know how they do that um, each country uses that spies mm -hmm. and one of the ways that you teach spies to get secret information is through um, love is to go through yeah, people yeah, yeah. going into relationship into relationship you pretend to be a girlfriend and stuff so but the whole idea is you get into bed so you can get stuff mm -hmm. out of their life mm -hmm. uh, steal secrets or destroy their life you're not yeah, there for yeah, love yeah, yeah. you are there on the job and so like in my mind it's always been like that that the enemy just wants yeah. to use this to he sends this person on the job yeah. and their job is satan's job that person might not even know they're mm -hmm. part of a bigger plot yes is to destroy your whole life that god has been yeah. building and to hit god in the face Absolutely. and say look we got another one look 
we just embarrassed your kingdom look so many people are going to be affected by that and so and none of us are protected from that ever happening if we walk in pride arrogance or think that ah man i don't struggle with enough, that kind of stuff yeah. i'm strong enough yeah if samson wasn't strong enough if solomon wasn't wise enough and david wasn't courageous enough who do we think we are we have to humble ourselves mm -hmm. and submit ourselves to bible purity good relationships run to run from and run with come on are you a spy <laughs> somebody told greg Locke that i was a <laughs> russian spy yeah <laughs> satan agents must go in jesus name amen so guys amen. we have brought this to yes. an end this was great this was good there's about two thousand of you on uh, facebook and youtube combined um if you enjoy this drop a fire emoji in the chat mm -hmm. right now we're gonna stick around for a little bit and answer some questions and um but before we do that we want to ask you guys if this was a blessing to you would you consider um partnering with our team partnering with our ministry for us to bring books courses um material to the world we have an amazing team um, that we invest the resources that come in to buy tools to buy um, to also bring different team members on the team to help us with this stuff a lot of people are surprised they're like how are you able to do that most people don't understand that the only reason i'm able to do all of this and effectively mm -hmm. is because of an amazing team that i have and so and all of that takes resources and so it's not just me by myself there was no way i would be able to do with the books with the courses uh with translating it into different languages short clips and insta books and all of that stuff and then traveling and preaching and so i want to ask you right now if the lord has um blessed you if you have means and you are able to would you consider becoming a partner with our ministry just uh if god gives you a desire to give one time that's also going to be helpful but if um you have a desire and you enjoy this ministry you kind of watch us repeatedly hey become a partner today just uh, go to pastorvlad.org forward slash partner it will mean the world to us if the lord put that on your heart if you're not able or your heart is not moved um you know what we still appreciate you and we want to say thank you for yeah. watching thank yeah. you for um, supporting our ministry it means a lot this ministry is really changing the world come on yes amen Amen. And those of you, there's a Cash App and Venmo as well and PayPal as well as um, a mailbox that's dropped in the chat and in the description that you can use in case some people say, hey, I just want to rather send a check. Um, you can do that as well. And so um, we have amazing projects coming up, new e-courses that are coming up, the yeah. book that's coming out I'm right away. in three, the book. Three languages, the book is coming yeah. out. That's going to yeah. be exciting. And then... Um, I think it's going to be one of your best books yet. I believe prophesy, woman of God. So Come on, somebody. Yeah. yeah. So host the Holy host Ghost. The Holy I believe Ghost. it's going to be, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're putting more and more work now mm -hmm. into our content so that it's 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 higher quality. And we're almost, almost at 1 million subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. And so it's Come been on. a crazy journey. Yeah. So, um, and thank you guys, those of you who are becoming YouTube um uh, members and gifting memberships I see a lot of you gifting memberships and we're also uploading some other stuff to um, uh, memberships there and those of you that are giving online we appreciate you thank you so very much amen so where you want to grow that's kind of my mm -hmm. my thing if you're receiving blessing uh, bless others yes. as well bless others through our ministry Amen. Um, if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and drop that in the chat. We would like to um, talk for you for a little bit. Uh, um, amen. Wow, your hands are so warm. Oh, you're so cold. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, E-boy, is oral sex okay in marriage? Um, go to my video and watch a video called What Kind of Sex is Okay in Marriage? Mm -hmm. And um, it will be very enlightening. Yeah.
you guys should go live more often. We will. We will go live more often. Yeah. Why do men and women and women, why men to men and women relationships are growing? Um, yeah, there is uh, a lot of perversion that is taking place in our culture yeah. where men get attracted to men, women get attracted to women. The Bible in Romans chapter 1 says that God gave them up. Um, so to some degree that that is biblical explanation. Mm -hmm. But um, the enemy also uses the yeah. fact that in our culture there's such a big emphasis now on love is love. And I think that um, there is so much because it's acceptable, it's celebrated. And mm -hmm. again, yeah. your crowd affects your cloud. Absolutely. Your vibe yeah. is created by your tribe. So you listen to too much stuff like that. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to start getting those ideas. How long have you been married? We are celebrating 13 years of marriage this coming Monday. Come on. What's your take on guys with piercings? Mm -hmm. No, not my thing ever. <laughs> yeah, I personally discourage guys no. from wearing earrings. Definitely not attractive. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on second marriage? Is it okay even if the first husband is still alive? So I do have a video, Sarah, on marriage and remarriage, where I go through the verses and explain. It's kind of a little bit lengthy, but I would really encourage you to listen to that. Can a spouse have a close friend from the opposite sex? I don't think so <laughs> i don't think so yeah mm -mm. it's uh your spouse can become your close friend that's the goal why not yeah yeah why not yeah i wouldn't uh, yeah. want lana to have a close like friend. like i when i was in the world uh, before i got saved i did have life. uh one of the best friends was a guy but then once i got saved and married it's we respect each other. We see each other on Instagram, but we're not like best friends or friends anymore. So I think you don't discard a friendship in a sense, but you put friendship where it belongs. Your spouse comes first. There's boundaries like we discussed with the opposite sex. And yeah. Can, how can you restore the marriage after the loss of a child? I think the Holy Spirit can restore it absolutely 100%, run to Him first, but also you need to go through the uh, grief counseling. I think it's a good idea, professional grief counseling. And don't discard that idea. Actually, I would suggest you to do it. Yeah. Mm. Because mm. before you had a child, you had your spouse. Mm. And to cherish your spouse before your children is what is, you know, I think it's, very important to do that but i mean i understand it's a very very sensitive issue and that's why you need to talk it through with a counselor what causes a person to commit adultery was it possible due to generational curses yeah absolutely it's very very possible yeah it, it may run in the family yeah. if something is pushing it and there's a lot of other trigger of things of, yeah. but ultimately it is an issue of the heart as well. And yeah. um, we take responsibility, those of us we who We don't sin. like blame. Yeah. Oh, it's generational right. curse. Right. But we also don't disregard because that could be it. But we take responsibility for the sins. What do you look for in a Christian spouse? What do you look in a Christian spouse? What did I, you look in? I think that, well, number one is they need to be a Christian. Yeah. Uh, number two is they need to be opposite sex. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I need to mention that nowadays. Yeah. Number three is um, I they have to be, in my case, they have to be the ones that love serving Jesus, mm -hmm. not just loving Jesus. Because some yeah. you know people yeah. love to. Um, uh, and I think the vision for life has to be aligned. Yeah, and then they have, have to there has to be some together, comparability. Yeah. And yeah. in my case, also I think it has to be chemistry. You, you gotta uh, you gotta actually like that person you want to yeah. be with that person yeah. not like yeah. oh my sister in christ yeah and stuff so i think it has to be more than my sister mm -hmm. in christ and so um and they have to like you back so there's also the um you know confirmation or the mm -hmm. blessing from your uh, people that know you your mm -hmm. mentors also very good mm -hmm. your thoughts on hallmark romance type movies non-steamy books and non-steamy books I think it's fine. I don't. I don't think there is anything wrong with um, movies that have love or because relationships. Because it is real, real life stories. Yeah. It's real life. Yeah. We live in a world that there is love. People fall in love. Yeah. 
Yeah. But when things get steamy and mm-hmm. sexual and get lustful and mm-hmm. um, then then that becomes kind of messy. Uh-huh. How can I walk with Jesus every day by reading the Word and talking to Him? Uh, what are your thoughts on married couples using toys in the bedroom? Mike, very good question, American Patriot. I would also refer to you to a video that I did called, it's actually surprisingly the most viewed video on YouTube uh, mm-hmm. on my mm-hmm. channel most viewed video uh, called what's okay in marriage and I address the toys oral sex and other stuff how do you rebuild trust after it's been broken in marriage very slowly and it takes two to tangle yeah uh, it takes one incident to break the yeah. trust and it, it takes, takes a long, long, long time, time to, to rebuild, rebuild it, it. Mm-hmm. so I just need to be very patient yeah. What what advice do you have for a couple who's dating long distance? Because we were long distance. We were long distance, yeah. I think for a couple like that, they don't need to be dating for years and years. <laughs> they should probably, if they are sure, mm-hmm. meet each other, you know, get to know each other. But, I mean, and just, you know, if you're sure in a person, just tie the knot. Yeah, I mean, uh, we were about three and a half hour drive. So our... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, long distance wasn't necessarily like super super long distance mm-hmm. so I drove I think every two weeks almost yeah every other weekend mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I proposed yeah. after about three four months yeah yeah gas was expensive <laughs> <laughs> and it was way cheaper at the time than uh, Uncle Biden is right now running this economy yeah. and so way more expensive now mm-hmm. so I don't know personally like I don't think people should be dating for very long yeah. yeah, I don't think. I think dating for in um, general. <laughs> general, like yeah. four years, five years. I'm like, are you okay? Is everything all right with you? <laughs> and stuff. So thoughts on watching a bachelorette or a bachelor. I, I think those things are um, bachelor and bachelorette I is watched. junk. Yeah. And I don't think you should be uh, watching that kind of stuff. And so um, that just, anyway, don't get me started. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and so... Um, how long do you, I think I just saw, how long should you date before getting married or knowing the one? It, it depends it on depends if you're in the same the church or in the same place, yeah. 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 Depends on your, obviously, <laughs> age. Yeah. Even financial situation. I mean, even then, you don't have to be, you don't have to have all dogs in a row mm-hmm. with your finances. Just hire a private investigator. <laughs> Look at their background story. No, don't and, do that. I'm just kidding. That's, I'm just kidding. that's a bad start. <laughs> I'm, right I'm there. just kidding. Okay, don't. Nobody cut this. <laughs> bad don't, advice. Don't, don't cut this off and then start uploading videos. I know. And, yeah. So, but um, when I met with Lana, like I knew that I don't have like my whole life to figure out a lot of stuff. So I just asked her straight up, like serious questions. Yeah. Like yeah. it was like an interrogation style. Yeah. And I was like, Hey, how was this? This? Mm-hmm. Did you do this? Did you ever do this? Did you? Um, do you have debt? You know, the car that you came on, do you own this car? It's on payments. <laughs> you the, asked me that? I oh, yeah. I asked, you about your, I, I asked you about your FICO score. <laughs> I didn't probably know what that is at all. <laughs> yeah, again, that's just Ukrainian. That's so and so, funny. yeah, probably not a good I idea. Don't remember. But yeah, I just didn't have much time to just go in through mm-hmm. like years. Plus, I was already a preacher. So, a lot of people in your church that kind of knew me. So, you know, I didn't have uh, that. And um, yeah, but I personally don't think you should be dating for very long. I think you should get to know each other, definitely. Mm-hmm. And yeah, um, you have to know who yeah, you're married. Yeah, you got to know who they yeah. are and stuff. So, But honestly, sometimes dating doesn't help you to get to know them. Yeah, because I think you get to know them by being their friend. I think long dating does not help. No, if it can, it can. It's just it's gonna more take like a long time. Yeah, probably you will find out yeah. more about person. Yeah, that's why I would go straight mm-hmm. to their pastor <laughs> right away and just that's what I did. I before I went to yeah, Lana, yeah, I actually yeah, went to her did. youth pastor and yeah. I said, "Hey, listen, there's a girl in your youth group." And he thought you were talking about my sister. I know. He said all these <laughs> he nice said things. Said all the nice <laughs> things. Then he marries me. <laughs> <laughs> and finds out and all the stuff. And the youth pastor is like, oh, that was a different sister I thought you were referring to. Yeah, and I have a past. <laughs> um, yeah, so it if I would have... So, so we, we got the sisters mixed up, yeah. yeah uh, but but not, not as bad as Jacob in the Bible. Sure. Yeah, he yeah. got but the... But then your, your younger brother married my younger sister. Yeah, so, so we're still fun. keeping everything yeah. in the family. <laughs> and uh, 
But no, uh, to to correct that, her youth pastor is a very close friend of mine, and he did find out eventually what the um, yeah, uh, what yeah. who I was asking about. But honestly, I have yeah. stopped. I think quite few relationships when the guy reached out to me about one of the girls in our church. Oh, yeah, I had oh, okay. I had one time okay. a youth pastor reach out yeah. to me and say, "Hey, there's a girl that I'm interested from your uh-huh. church. Um, you know, she's really this mm. and that." And and I was <laughs> like, "Dude." I'm like, what did you do that God is punishing you? And I was like, bro, this this is not like he was kind of he thought that this girl is like on the fire for God and everything. Like but this girl was the furthest thing from being on the fire for God. Mm-hmm. She just literally did. She had a great social media page, yeah. but she was not. Um, there was a lot of very serious problems that everybody yeah. knew yeah. in the church mm-hmm. and everybody knew around. I was I wasn't destroying her reputation because I talked with her actually already about that in our church when I was a youth pastor. And she just, you know, wasn't living a repentant lifestyle. So I was like, hey, um, I like, I would not. I was like, there's just some serious stuff. And he broke up and he was so grateful afterwards. And oh, no, he didn't break up. He didn't even start a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and, and I protected a few of our guys in our yeah. team like that by uh, reaching out to their pastors first. So like, there's other ways to get to know other people as well. I think Jacko's trying to come in. <laughs> Yeah, could you open the door? See if uh, we want to introduce Jacko. I think he's trying to Jacko, really come get on. in. Come, baby. Aww. Come here. Come on, come on. Good what boy. if you say are dating hi. and you fall? Say hi. Jacko, you want to say hi? Hello? Oh. Good boy. Okay, guys. <laughs> this is um, this right is now. Her. There's a guy named Jacko right here. Yes. Jacko, you want to <laughs> say hi? Puff, puff, puff. Yeah. He was standing by the door breathing. <laughs> Yeah, Lana, heard Lana already was hearing he his was breathing. He was trying to get yeah. in here. Cutie. Okay, baby, go. Somebody's saying if they are dating and they fell into sin, should they now break up because they fell into sin? I think it depends on the situation sometimes. Many times mm-hmm. I would probably encourage them to actually get married. If they were planning to get married. Yeah. But definitely yeah. repentance. I would go in, into repentance, number yeah. one. And number two is that probably get some counseling. Yeah. Get some uh, what's happening mm-hmm. with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, But I don't think that that's a reason for a breakup yeah. as much as yeah. actually in the Old Testament. If a man slept with a virgin, he had to marry her. Marry her yeah. yeah. It was just like yeah. you have to go get married yeah. right after that. And mm-hmm. so, um, so I wouldn't use that as a, an excuse mm-hmm. to get unless there's something else going on. But it is sin to do that. It is sin to fornicate. Yeah. Were you baptized before or after you got married? Um, so we got baptized when we before. accepted Jesus. Yeah. yeah, when we gave our life to Jesus, we which were happened already before. Christian. Yeah, we were Christian. So once you become Christian, you, you get, get baptized. water baptized. Mm-hmm. And marriage is kind of... Yeah. Okay. Well, guys, thank you so much. My wife is already tapping me on <laughs> on the lap, letting me know that pam pam, we gotta go. So it's been actually a very busy day for us with a yeah. uh, recording of the e course, and then uh, now we are here. So we're grateful for our team that's here, and as well as those that are watching online um, for um, doing this today. This is our first time coming back. Did you guys enjoy this today? Would you uh, want to see more of this next week? I'm gonna have. Uh, Jeremiah Johnson. Oh, uh, oh it's going to be fire, man. It's going to be it's going to be incredible yeah. about dreams and about um, some of the things that he's seen already that's going to happen that has happened and mm-hmm. um and the vision that God gave him about five spirits that are attacking the church right now. So, it's going to be at the same time 7 o'clock. Make sure you tune in. Make sure you save the date. Um and then we're going to still be uploading every single um, Monday, Wednesday, and then Thursday stream, and then Saturday um, a video as well. So about four times. And the last thing that I want to ask, how many of you are signed up to my emails and you got the email yesterday and today? Drop number one in the chat. If you have signed up to my emails, would you give me the host the Holy Ghost book right behind you? Um, so drop number one in the chat if you have signed up for my emails. If you have no idea what I just said, you're like, man, oh, emails, what? So I send emails every single week um, to our people. We have a lot of people now. And partially the reason why I'm getting that is because there's a high chance that we might lose this channel 
Um, but if you are not signed up, please go and sign up for my emails. We just added one more feature to the emails today. So where you can actually sign up for fasting updates. So I have this community. It's a closed community called um, Fasting Challenge. Mm -hmm. And so, so if you want to get fasting updates, so you can sign up for like four types of emails. The first one is emails from Vlad, which is weekly, fasting updates, which is monthly, podcast updates. So this is just kind of automated um, things or blog updates and you just get automated blogs. Mm -hmm. But first two is what I would kind of sign up for is the emails from Vlad and then uh, fasting updates, yeah. which happens once a month. Before we go into fasting, we send you an email. I'm excited for four emails. <laughs> oh, Cheryl, <laughs> come on, somebody. <laughs> Cheryl, just, just don't block me, okay? Like, so, and if you get too many emails, just like unsubscribe from one of them, but don't, don't block me, okay? And stuff. So, yeah, so when you get the email, make sure that you right away uh, respond to it. Could, uh, why could you be losing this channel? So, Lizzie, I am not losing my channel. Okay, so let's not be declaring these There's negative things. There's just always a possibility. There's a possibility. Yeah. So I have quite a few friends that what happens with them is they just get like kicked out for no reason. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, and YouTube comes up with yeah. some dumb reason, but like it completely doesn't make sense. And so, and I knew that like before I even went into YouTube. So I've always actually had my email list set up. So if you guys have seen that, but now that... The YouTube channel is growing. I just don't want to get to the point where I wake up in the morning and they're like, oh, yeah, you said something about the alphabet community. And now we decided it's a hate speech and we bam, you know, kicked you out. And then those, you know, million subscribers, it's going to be millions, you know, you know, we kind of lost the contact. And so what we're doing is that we're creating these encouragement, encouraging messages that I send every week, not spamming you. I'm not dropping you all kinds of advertisements. And then... um and just to kind of encourage you, but the, the idea is to keep to keep a relationship going so that if something were to happen with the video platform, you know, we're not disconnected. That's pretty much yeah. all. And then occasionally, like it happened today, I send uh, an email about like, hey, guys, I'm coming back to Thursday stream. So like, you know, this doesn't happen every month because I only resume the live stream mm -hmm. like once in six months. And so, yeah, so please do that. So if it goes into your spam then just reply or just register my email in your contact so that my email doesn't go into your spam. Please. That would mean a lot. So we're oh. dropping the... Oh, tell me about this book. Why <laughs> guys, are you excited? Guys, guys, the book. Hostaholyghost.com. Host Host Host. This so is incredible. So there's one more thing. Yeah. yeah. Host the Holy Ghost. You can pre-order right now. And you can sign up to be part of um the group that helps us to kind of get the word out but you can pre-order the book yeah. right now so if you go to host the holy ghost yeah. um, or you go to pastorvlad.org and you click pre-order yeah. um, you can right away pre-order on amazon mm -hmm. um, actually today and this book yeah. is going to be available on september 12th come on i am excited so um september 12th love this book. the book is coming out and um and I love the design. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, it's it's just Amazing. beautiful. Yeah. We've been, I love the creamy pages. The creamy pages. <laughs> so yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. So if you enjoyed the fasting book and the fight back and the break free book, this book is going to be fire. So just pre-order today. And um, do we have discount on that? So I will have that book as well uh, for a free download the moment it comes out. And it will be in audio as well. Mm -hmm. So everything is going to come out in Russian, Spanish, and Audible, Kindle, all of that, nine yards. Yeah. Sign up for the emails. I need that book. Yes, I will be. And then our fasting. Um, so if you want to kind of stay up to date with, my, with when our fasting streams, which we do them in the morning, um, the fasting stream is coming out on the august 28th through 30. let's drop this in the chat fasting mm -hmm. is august 28th through mm -hmm. august 30. so the best way is just go to pastorvlad.org and just mm -hmm. sign up emails and just sign up for fasting updates and then we'll be just pretty much giving you those three four days before we go into fasting so um or fasting challenge fasting challenge you sign up there and we'll be giving you those as well so that's our 
uh, fasting. We have a Bible memory group, the whole nine yards. Everything is on the website. Um, yeah. Any final thoughts would you like to tell our precious um, online audience? <laughs> no, just thank you guys for being with us tonight, tuning in. We appreciate you. We love you. And yeah, have a great night, everyone. Or morning. <laughs> If you're somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know if anybody told you guys. But you guys are awesome. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> okay, we'll see you guys soon. Bye.